Hello, my name is Tom J. McCoy and I'm a director from Arizona. Um, today I'm going to bring you hopefully a fast tutorial on Film Convert. Um, I'm going to put an annotation on the screen for those of you who know what Film Convert is and you just want to learn how to use it. Um, but for those of you who don't and are interested in knowing about it, I'm just going to talk about it for like a minute. So um, Film Convert is a program that takes digitally captured images and converts it to emulate film stocks. So Kodak Film Stocks, Fujifilm, Ilford, and I think there's a Polaroid one. So you can also use grain from Super 35, 16 millimeter, uh, just a bunch of different film grains, which is really cool to get those, those filmic looks in through digital cameras. Um, it's really fast to use, it's really simple, and I'm gonna hopefully do a very simple tutorial. So I'm just gonna get started. Um, so I have Film Convert in here already. Um, I'm just gonna turn it on real quick. So the first thing you do is you choose what your source camera was. So we shot with the Ari Alexa Mini, which is the same color profile as the Alexa, and we shot Log C film. So um, the next thing you do, the next thing I do, is I turn off the film grain because it, it, it's distracting to me when I'm color grading. I'll put it back on later. But um, after that, you choose what film stock you wanna use. You just uh, go here. You have Kodak, Fujifilm, um, Ilford, and a Polaroid one at the bottom. So Kodak up until FJ Valve 100, those are all motion picture film stocks. Below that is black and white film stocks. And as you kind of go down, they get um, a little bit more contrasty. And then once you get to Fujifilm H400 Pro, these from what I understand are film, um, still photography film stocks. Um, not to say you can't use them, you can totally use them. You're just gonna be emulating the colors from those film stocks. So for the, the tutorial, we're gonna be using Kodak 5207 because that's what I actually used for Krakota, um, which is this short film here. This, that's what this front is from. So um, right after that, the next thing I usually do is I change my exposure. So this is a little bit blown out and we're going for sort of an overcast look. So I'm gonna to go to exposure and type in negative 0.2 uh, that's probably too much, negative 0.15, to bring it down one and a half stops. Um, the next thing is it's a little warm, so I'm going to change the color temperature. Um, this is the closest program I've found besides shooting raw that has a really good white balance change, so hats off to Film Convert for that because it's a lifesaver a lot of the time. Um, so I want to go down maybe 200 Kelvin, I'm going to type in 5400, and that brought in some blue to the image, it's a little bit cooler now. Um, so that's starting to look good. The levels are still a little bit crushed here and that's pretty blown out up there. So I'm going to fix that. I'm going to go into my levels. Um, so I see that the whites aren't necessarily completely blown out so I can save them a little bit. The darks are about actually where I want them. So I'm going to change the curve here. So I'm just going to put this to zero real quick. So that's keeping all the film color but getting rid of all the contrast. So we want to keep some of that. So I'm going to put it to maybe 75 and then I'm gonna work off of this. So it's starting to look pretty good. Um, I'm going to bring these midtones towards the whites a little bit and give it some of that overcast look. Kind of dark, I graded this film pretty dark most of the time. Um, but we're not really losing any detail. It is starting to look more like an overcast day, which is nice, but it still looks kind of purple. So normally I would go into another program and do color correction, but Film Convert, you can do some color correction and grading at the same time, which is really nice. Um, but for this tutorial, I'm just gonna do it here. So um, to get rid of the purple in this shot, I'm gonna change the midtones to green, and that'll cancel out a lot of the purple. And then for this color grade, I did a lot of green shadows. I don't want it to be too green because I don't want it to look like John Wick all the time, which is a pretty stylized film, but they did a lot of like, anyway. Um, so I want to save the sky a little bit, so somebody's texting me. Um, it looks a little bit yellow right now. I kind of want it to look a little blue, so I'm going to bring the highlights to blue, and that's going to cool off the image a little bit. That might be too much, but whatever. That's cool. Um, and then I can mess with this a little bit more, give it a little bit more contrast. Yeah, that's okay, cool. So. That's actually how easy Film Convert is to use. I just graded, I just went from that to that 
super fast. So it's really easy to use, it's really fast. So for those of you who don't really have a grasp on color grading that much, this is super easy to use and you can get some really nice looks in. Um, I use it all the time for, I used it for Krakota, um, pretty much the whole thing. And then I used some Da Vinci and Magic Bullet looks too, but I got my base grades in Film Convert. So the next thing I'm gonna talk about um, is actually using film grains. So you have 35 millimeter, super 35, 35 millimeter, three perf. You have a Academy, which is a four perf, um, super 16, 16, super eight, and eight millimeter. So when you go to do this, After Effects or Premiere or whatever you're using it in, it's gonna make it look really grainy at 100%. So before you do an entire project, um, oh, there's sirens outside. Um, before you do an entire project and you go to render it and you didn't do any tests, I always recommend doing tests on film grains. So for Krakota, we actually did an, a 4 perf at 65%. I ran a bunch of tests and that's the texture I wanted. It came out looking really nice. Um, there's a couple things. Eight, I'm just going to talk about real quick. So these are just tips. So if you just want to go and have fun, this is just tips for film convert at this point. Um, if you're going to do like an eight millimeter um, film convert and you have 100% grain and then you later on decide you don't want the grain anymore so you put it to zero and you totally forget, um, what it does to emulate that film stock is it adds a blurriness to it. So if I go from eight millimeter to super 35, it's gonna bring back the sharpness. So make sure if you're not gonna use any grain put it back to super 35. Otherwise you're gonna lose a lot of detail and it's gonna be super blurry. Um, another thing that is actually pretty important, if you're uploading to like YouTube or Vimeo or Facebook or whatever you're uploading to, um, I actually don't recommend using film convert film grains. Um, not to say film convert is bad. It has nothing to do with film convert. It has to do with YouTube's compression, Vimeo's compression, what it actually does to that film grain. It actually sees it as noise and it will add banding to your projects. It'll it'll just look really bad. It'll be blocking all over the place and it, it'll recognize it as noise. So um, even if you're uploading in like 4K, I still, when I upload in 4K, I still don't use film convert grains. If you're going to like Blu-ray and you have control over what compression you use, it totally works fine. Um, or if you're rendering ProRes 422 or something like that, it works totally fine. But if you're going online, I recommend running a lot of tests first. <laughs> but I haven't found a way to make it look right. So um, that's it, that's all I really have. Um, you can also keyframe things, like this shot here, I keyframed from uh, an exposure of zero to negative two. It's really easy to use. Um, you can do that kind of stuff in color correction too, but you can do it in film convert. But um, I don't know why I'm spitting right now, but um, that's about it. That's all I have for Film Convert, guys. I hope this was a really fast and easy tutorial to follow. It's a really sweet program. It can get you some really nice looks, and it'll give you a nice film look, and you can actually mess with it a lot, which is really cool. There's a newer version out of Film Convert that I don't have that gives you a lot more free range. You can add vignettes and tints, and you have a lot more control over um, uh, exposure and things like that. But... I don't have that version, unfortunately. I might get it in the future, but right now I'm using this. Um, I'm gonna do some more tutorials in the future. I unfortunately don't have Sony Vegas anymore. I upgraded to a Mac and I'm not going to put Windows on my Mac. There's just no way I'm not gonna do that. So unfortunately, no more Sony Vegas tutorials, um, but I will be doing tutorials on Premiere and After Effects. Um, my next tutorial will be on actually render settings for 4K and 1080 in Premiere and After Effects. So look forward to those. I will be doing more tutorials. I'm very sorry I haven't done many, but they are coming. Winter is coming. All right. I'll see you guys later.